Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I've received numerous questions concerning the new masking tools found in the latest version of Lightroom. In this video, I'm going to do my best to answer two of the most common questions that I've received. This by far is the most common comment or question that I've received. Many photographers don't think there's any difference between adding or subtracting from a mask compared to intersecting a mask. And they're right to a point. There are many instances where you could use either method. You could add to a mask, subtract from a mask, or intersect two masks and get the same exact results. There are, though, some instances where you have to use intersect with a mask to get the results you desire. For example, I have this art image of a model and she has yellow paint on her. Let's just say I want to make a selection of the yellow paint to change the color of that paint. Well, how do you do it? Behind her isn't a sky, so I can't really select the sky and then invert it or anything like that. I can't, I can't select her and then Maybe I could use a brush and subtract from her skin. That gets complicated, right? Intersect with is the way to go. Um, you, and just to demo, like, let's just say I want to get color range. When you do that, you'll get an eyedropper. I click on the yellow paint, and you'll get a selection of the background as well. You could try to, if it was sky back there, I could subtract it that way, but that's not sky. So I, I, there's really no way to do this without using intersect. So let me... Uh, get rid of that mask. And if you didn't see one of my earlier videos demonstrating intersect with, let me just remind you what it does. You have two different selections as depicted by these two circles. So circle on the left is one selection, circle on the right is a second selection. Where they overlap is where they intersect. And if you use intersect with in Lightroom, what you'll be left with as a selection is just the area they intersect. So you started out with one selection, circle one, a second selection, circle two, and then what happens when you use intersect with, the only thing you'll be left with is the overlap. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I just select the paint and nothing else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the subject. So now I have a selection of the subject. That's circle one. Now I need just a selection of the paint. Now because I don't have the yellow background selected, when I use intersect with, that won't be affected by my color range mask. So what I'll do is I'll go to either mask one or subject one and just click on the three dots. It doesn't matter which three dots you click on. Go to intersect mask with color range. And when you do that, you'll get an eyedropper. Now I'll click on the yellow paint on her face. And when I do that, you notice it removed the selection from her face and her hair, but we just have a selection on the yellow paint. It didn't select the background. It's just intersecting the mask. Now I didn't get all the paint because the paint isn't a uniform yellow color, but I could add to my selection by holding in the shift key. And I'll click on the paint right there, and I'll add, I'll click on the paint right there. And I have now just the paint selected. Now I could go and change the color of it. Now, I, now you can see I missed some down in here. I could still add to the selection. I'll hold in the shift key and click there. There. Now I've just used intersect with to just select the paint. And you can see how that works. And maybe there is a way you could use add, subtract, and play around with the masks to get it to work, but this is just a lot faster and easier. So that is a specific situation where you have to use intersect with. Add or subtract won't get you there. So I'll just change the color of the paint. Now the second question I've received, not as this isn't as common a question as that intersect with, is this depth range mask. I mentioned in the previous video and I showed that it's grayed out because my 
image didn't have any depth info. And I mentioned that most often you'll get some depth range with some cell phones or mobile phones or smartphones, whatever you want to call it. And that's because uh, many higher end smartphones uh, have really high end cameras in them with multiple lenses. And it used to be that the only way you could get depth information written to a file is to use it with a camera that had multiple lenses. Now, though, there is software um, that's available in some cameras that allows you to get depth information with one lens. I don't know of any major camera manufacturers that have it incorporated in their cameras. If you do, let me know in the comments below. But I have read that that technology is available so that down the line, you'll probably see Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fuji uh, have in-camera depth information, and it's all going to be done with software, not multiple lenses. But you'll notice that depth range is active on this image because I took it with my iPhone 12 Pro Max. All right. And to get depth, if you want to use a depth range mask, all you need to do then is click on it, and you'll get an eyedropper. Now we have depth information in this image. So if I click on somewhere, this flower in the foreground, I'll get a mask at that area. So I'm just getting this flower. And you notice it didn't matter about color. Let me uh, delete that mask and let me get the depth range mask again. Let's say I want, I click right like in the middle of the flower and you'll notice it still selects the flower because it's using depth. It's not using color. It's not using luminance. It's using depth. Now we could tweak this. That's what this slider is here. Um, if I take this slider that's to the right and move it to the right, you'll see that I'm starting to push the selection backwards. I'm getting uh, stuff selected that is further away from the camera. If I move it to the left, I'm bringing it more forward, more towards the camera. And then you'll see this area right here. This is where it's saying that flower is. And I could move, whoops, and I could like remove the mask just about totally. I also could come here with these little sub like sliders and kind of move that as well. And you can see I'm pushing it back. If I keep going, I'll select everything, right? So you could see how you could um, use these two sliders on the bottom and then these other sliders on the side of the actual selection to kind of refine your mask and get it to be exactly what you want it to be and where you want it to be. Just like that. Now, you know, when you're satisfied with it, then you could come in and let's say I'll just take that overlay off and you'll see that I'm just affecting that flower right there. So that is depth range. That's like what I mentioned. I've received a lot of questions about this because people say they never have it active and They've been told by, that's one person said, they were told by their so-and-so friend that it's always active for them and it's never active for them. And, well, it really has to do with your hardware, uh, first and foremost, uh, whether or not your, the hardware you're using has multiple lenses or it has the software incorporated into it so that it would, could record the depth information. So... Hopefully that helps and it answers those questions. And again, those are probably the two most common questions, but by far, like 10 to 1 has to do with intersecting a mask. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.